We're continuing our study in the book of 1 John, in 1 John chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 3 through 6, but we're probably going to concentrate on 3 and 4 tonight. Again, a turtle's pace that we are running in this study. Same way on Tuesday nights, by the way. We, we, we run at about this pace. Uh, looking at a test of our light this evening. Our understanding, our knowledge of the Lord. And how this helps us assure us that we know him. In verse 3, we see there, and hereby we know, we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected, whereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Father, we thank you for your word and we pray now, Lord, you'll bless this time. Father, we pray that we would know, we would be able to know you, know you personally, know you intimately, and be able to keep your commandments that you have given us as the proof of our knowledge of Christ. Our Father, we just pray that you'll speak to our hearts through the message. For Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> it talks about here in these verses the believer's assurance. And having insurance and having assurance in life is a very good thing. Having insurance isn't bad either. But having assurance is definitely a very good thing. In fact, having assurance is like having security. And security is a very good thing. When I come up to the platform and I sit down in that chair, I have the assurance that that chair will hold my weight. Until the day it doesn't. <laughs> and the day that it doesn't means I need to go on a diet. <laughs> Having assurance of certain facts in life that are always true. And knowing these facts is assuring. Knowing the fact that you reap what you sow, that's very assuring. Knowing the fact that what goes up must come down, and the laws of gravity, and that they still work, I'm thankful for that. Or else I'd be floating around the ceiling now about this time. And that one plus one is still two. Whether you use the old math or the new math or the in-between math, I believe one plus one is still two. One plus one, yeah, two. And that's assuring to be able to know. And there are many other things in life that are very assuring. Also knowing that you have a nest egg set aside for retirement, or from working, or for other things can be reassuring. Financial security is not a bad thing, especially in the day and age in which we live. It's good to have. And knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and knowing that you will be with him one day soon in heaven, is very reassuring in the day and age in which we live. But how do you know for sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior? What's the proof? Well, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. And the proof of the pudding is in the eating. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 13, we have this 
promise of assurance. <coughs> that a person can know that they have eternal life. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, the Bible says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That fact does not change, and that's reassuring. And those who call upon the name of the Lord, he gives them eternal life. And you can know that fact for sure and certain in your life. But there are so many people who say that they are Christians. In fact, if you were to take a poll of the United States, even with all the declining that's happening in the church and in Christianity, somewhere between 80 to 90% of them would say they're Christians. But for many of them, I have to ask, where's the proof? Or as, you know, the old lady said in the Wendy's commercial back in the 80s, where's the beef? Where's the proof? The Apostle John relates these verses here back to 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7 down through chapter 2 and verse 2. He uses the same kind of language there in chapter 1 and verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. The same type of language is used here in verses 3 through 6. And those verses tell us that we have fellowship with God as we walk in the light. We have forgiveness of our sins and the cleansing of all unrighteousness if we confess our sins to him, to the Lord. And we have this because we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who gave himself to pay the penalty of our sins. But John goes on to say that the proof of knowing Jesus Christ, there in verse number 3, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Jesus said, to his, Jesus said to his apostles, his disciples, in the Gospel of John chapter 14 and verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Having divine light and knowledge are the great improvement and beauty of the mind, to be able to know Christ and to be able to follow him. It helps with our thinking. In fact, it changes our thinking if we let it. And it becomes followers of Christ to be people of wisdom and of understanding. It's good for us to have wisdom and understanding. Then we can help others have wisdom and understanding. We can't give to people what we don't have. Can we? No. We cannot. New believers in Christ, they tend to magnify their newfound light and knowledge and tend to applaud it. Because they have not learned. Older believers tend to regret the things of God and His Word that they have forgotten over time. I have known Christians that have forgotten more Bible than I will ever know in my lifetime. <coughs> the evidence of, excuse me, the soundness of our knowledge 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. As if the knowledge that we have of God and of Christ and of his word leads us to obedience. Because that's where it should lead us. It should lead us to be obedient to the Lord. Keeping Christ's commandments proves our love for God. It proves how much we love God by being able to keep his commandments. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, in verse 21, and again in verse number 23, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, asked the Lord and said, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come in unto him and make our abode with him. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. If we are obedient to our Heavenly Father, our relationship with our Heavenly Father will be a good one. And when we're not obedient to our Heavenly Father, there is strain in the relationship between us and our Heavenly Father, just as it is between children and parents. If the child is disobedient, then the relationship has a little strain to it. This is going to hurt me more than it hurts you, that, that kind of strain. A needed strain, don't get me wrong, discipline is important. But it's still, there's still a strain there. If your child lies to you, it will take you a little while for you to trust them again. And you'll have to test what they tell you, right? Grandchildren are the same way. But if you're obedient, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, then the relationship is good. There's no strain. It's happy. There's no stress. It's nice. And no one can love Christ without keeping his commandments. It also proves... This also proves our faith, proves our faith toward Christ. In Ephesians chapter 2, most of the chapter, and in James chapter 2, <coughs> starting in verse 17, down through verse number 26, for time we'll not read those verses. But in James chapter 2, James talks about there in those verses of verse 17 through 26, that faith without works is dead being alone. If we're not obedient to the Lord, how are people going to know that we are believers in Christ? James said in, in those verses, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. I will show you that I'm obedient to God. I will show you that I love God by the things I do for God. And the things I do for God is because I love God. Not to gain any favor with God when it comes to my salvation. Because the Bible says 
We cannot work for our salvation. Our salvation is a free gift of God. Amen. Always has been, always will be. Amen. But no one can believe with a living faith without keeping Christ's appointed works. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, the Bible says that we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, saved, if you will, unto good works. That we should live or abide in them. If we love the Lord and we're obedient to the Lord, we'll do the good works for the Lord that he tells us to do in his word. We'll study the word. We'll pray. We'll be witnesses and testimonies of the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. We will, we will live by the word of God. And that shows our faith and love for God if we're obedient to him. We also see that obedience to Christ proves that we have his yoke upon us. As Jesus invites us in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. We are invited to leave our heavy burden in verse 28 with Christ. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest from your sin. I will give you salvation for your soul if you will come unto me. And then those who do that, who believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, he tells them, I want you to take my yoke upon you. And I want you to learn of me. I want you to know me. I want you to not know about me. I want you to know me personally. I want you to know me intimately. And if you take my yoke upon you, I'll teach you that. And as we go through life with the yoke of the Lord Jesus Christ upon us, yoke of oxen usually came in, in twos, in pairs, right? So who do you think is on the other side of the yoke that he's placed upon us? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Walking with us side by side. That we may go through any trouble and any trial of life because he's there with us. And we get to know him personally and intimately. How great that is. It also approves of the fact that we follow Christ if we're obedient to Him. It proves of our walking even as He walked, as we read there in verse 6 of 1 John chapter 2. And it's also proof of being in fellowship with God as we saw in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. Each perfection of Christ reinforces His authority that Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. It also, it also reinforces the wisdom of His counsel. What greater counselor can one have than the Lord Jesus Christ? There are none. And if the current administration knew that, we'd be in a much better place. We see the riches of his grace. We see the grandeur of his works. And seeing these things recommends Christ's law and government upon our life, being obedient. A, con a, 
a conscience of obedience to Christ, to Christ's commands, shows that the retaining of the knowledge we have of Christ has been impressed upon our souls and impressed upon our hearts. That God's law has been written upon the tables of our heart. Not on tables of stone or pages in a book. That we know Christ personally and intimately. And we can know Christ that way if we're obedient to him. So, <laughs> if verse 3 is true, there in 1 John chapter 2, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments, then the opposite would be true. Those who do not keep the Lord's commandments do not know him. That's what verse, that's what verse 5, that's what verse 4 tells us. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. He's the same kind of person that says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Or the same one that there in verse number 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him, God, a liar, and his word is not in us. Those who profess to know Christ as their personal Savior, yet they're not obedient to his word and his commands, are deceiving themselves and others, and they're sinning against God. whether they want to admit that or not. Those who profess to know Christ and his truth are often ashamed of their lack of knowledge, and they're ashamed to admit their lack of knowledge. Nobody wants to be the person that doesn't know anything in the room. Often these, kind of, often these people, they pretend to know things that they really have no knowledge of. It would be like me talking with Brother Jerry or Brother Bob or Brother Jeff or Brother David Pyatt about hunting. Something I have never done in my life. Not that I'm against hunting, don't get me wrong. I just like people to hunt and then eat what they hunt. That's, that, that's the way I look at hunting. If I were to hunt, then I would be eating what I would shoot and kill. And I know there are those who don't do that. They do it for sport. I, I'm not a big fan of those types of hunters, myself personally. And even though I do not hunt myself, I don't see why people shouldn't. Just like I'm not a big advocate of owning a gun for myself personally, and I don't. But I'm not against those who do. If they feel they can and can do it safely, praise God. <laughs> the Second Amendment's in our Constitution for a reason. And I believe in the right to bear arms. Amen. And there may come a day where I will have to do that. And I'm going to have to learn how to shoot really quick. And Brother Bob is going to teach me how to shoot that shotgun really fast. <laughs> you put the shells in here, you do this, and you pull the trigger. <laughs> it's going to kick a little bit, but it'll be okay. <laughs> Once you get up off the ground, do it again. <laughs> But there are those who often pretend they know things 
that they have no knowledge of. And I couldn't keep up in a conversation about hunting with any people that hunt because I have no knowledge of it. Couldn't even fake a conversation. Now, fishing, I can tell fish stories. <laughs> On our honeymoon, I caught rainbow trout that was that big. Yeah, that big. <laughs> Robin can testify to that. What knowledge of God is there, though, that doesn't show us that Christ is most worthy of the most intense and complete obedience to Him? And if that were to be known and understood... How vain and superficial is the knowledge that we have of Christ and of God and of His Word if it doesn't persuade the heart to obedience. It's what that knowledge should do in our life. It should lead us to be obedient to the Lord. And if those that have that knowledge and are still disobedient to God... Do they really have knowledge of God? Do they really have knowledge of the Lord? In my estimation, they lack. Like those who have trouble to keep the commandment of assembling ourselves together as the manner of some is. I may not be old school, but I went to an old school, and my old school told me that every time the doors open at the church, you're there. Amen. Sunday morning, Sunday school, you're there. Sunday worship, you're there. Sunday night, you're there. Midweek service, you're there. Unless you're really sick and can't get there, or you're, di or you're dead. <laughs> the only two reasons to get out of it. Even work's not a good reason. But sometimes that happens. And we see the 62 have come down to a number in the 20s. When there should be how many here tonight? At least 62. Having a, knowledge, having a knowledge of God should lead us to obedience. It should stir our hearts to be obedient. A disobedient life is proof, is proof of their false, invalid, and defective faith. And it is the shame of those who pretend to have faith in Christ when they truly don't. Who say they love the Lord, but they find something more important to do than serving Him. Such actions are proof that they don't have any faith or honesty in them. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And God's word is not in them. Strong words, but true ones. The way that we know that we have a true knowledge of Jesus Christ is that we are obedient to his word and to his commandments. This is the test of our knowledge. This is the test of our life. Or the test of our knowledge of the Lord. Are we being obedient with what we know? Because what we know can change. Our knowledge can increase. 
of the Lord Jesus Christ over time. But when we learn something new, we need to be obedient to what we learn. And that proves to people that we know Christ and as a testimony to others. I appreciate your time and attention tonight.